Hello everyone, welcome to the P1 program. This lecture is P106.3. So we are almost at the end of the uh, what the two dimensional motion. So we have done the basics and now we are dedicating this lecture to a problem, to solving a problem in order to make sure that you are okay with two dimensional problems and how to solve them. So I'm going to straightforward introduce the problem and the problem is like this. So there is a guy, a uh, guy with a gun, right? There's a guy with a gun who is going to aim at an apple in the tree. So there is an apple in the tree. So there is a gun with this guy and he's going to aim at this apple. So he's going to aim at this apple like this right straight forward and then he's going to shoot right so he's going to shoot just like that and uh, what will happen does the apple hits the uh, the bullet hits the apple or it's going to miss so if you want to answer that question he's going to miss if he is not considering the effect of gravity on the bullet right so the bullet is going to be affected by some gravity this bullet will be affected by some gravitational force so the uh, force will induce some kind of change in direction so that he will miss the bullet uh, will miss the apple and he will end up in some new position say some x position right so in this position the bullet will hit so if you adjust with the effect of gravity, compensate for that effect, deliver it from a height depending upon the velocity of the bullet, then he might hit on that ball. So that's the case here. So what we are going to look at is that what is the difference in that uh, height difference for that bullet and what happens what should we do in order to make sure that the bullet hits okay that's the problem here so we can straightforward admit that if we have a person standing here like that and he's going to shoot and he's going to hit a point straight in the line of sight right if that's the case then we can say that if the apple is hanging from here and this is the actual path which we was supposed to make and this is a, at a height of say h1 or 10 meters or something like that this point is at a height of h2 at this distance will be h1 minus h2 right so that will be this distance and so this distance let it be some d and this angle be some theta and so from straight forward you can write down using the Pythagoras theorem itself that d must be equal to some square root of h1 minus h2 the whole square minus or plus s square right so that will be d using Pythagoras theorem with this angle being the right triangle right angle triangle now if that's the case then we can also say that there's sine theta will be equal to uh, what h1 minus h2 h1 minus h2 divided by d right and also cos theta here will be equal to s by d right so it's s by d so we have done this a long time for a long uh, number of examples so i'm not going to explain all that now there is this is uh, the basic scheme of this problem this amount of information is the basic scheme right so this is what we need to solve this problem so before that i'm going to ask you a simple question so if you are shooting from here and the ball is around here what happens if i have a sensor here okay a photo sensor light sensor that means when you shoot the uh, gun the flash of the gun will initiate the sensor and the ball will be released from here so the ball will be released instantly when the uh, bullet is fired so that means the 
time of start will of the bullet will be the same as that of the time of start of the uh, the ball right so the ball so both have the same starting time so what happens now the question to you guys is what will be the effect of that that thing okay so if the bullet is at this angle and it is coming in this direction with the effect of gravity downwards the ball is being released from rust from this point and it is also under the same influence of gravity so so that means the both of these thing will be under the influence of gravity in the y cap direction so in the y cap direction both of thing this thing will be pulled down right so the effect of that means that these whole two things the bullet and the ball will have will take the same amount of will actually cover the same amount amount of distance in the y axis so both of them will be covering the same distance in the y axis because they are under the influence of gravity and only gravity is there in the y axis imagine that there is no friction so there is no point of discussing friction at this point so there is no friction so frictional force or air friction is equal to zero and there is only gravity right so gravity is the only thing existing here that means the both the distances traveled in the y axis by the ball y axis by the ball will be equal to y the distance traveled by the uh, bullet in the y axis so that's i think that is intuitive and i hope you understood that that will be the same okay so if that's the case right so if that's the case then it will have the same time right the time will be the same so now we can use that uh, the original situation and let's let's uh, the sum of the information that we have gathered around here right sin theta and h1 and h2 now what will be the velocity right the velocity of the bullet will be like this and it can be resolved in the x axis and in the y axis so vx will be or vy will be v sin theta and vx will be v cos theta right okay so that means the distance in y which is the same for the bullet and the ball will be vy times t right its velocity times time is distance and distance in the x axis will be equal to vx times t right so that's the case so now you can simplify and say that dy will be equal to vy which is equal to v sin theta times time and dx will be equal to v cos theta times time right so that will be that so you can say dy what will be dy so if you have a ball hanging here and this is the distance it's going to travel after hitting with the bullet that means this is the height h1 and this is the height h2 right in the line of sight as we have explained in the beginning stage of the problem when you shoot like that then you can clearly see that h1 minus h2 will be the distance travel so distance dy must be equal to what h1 minus h2 that must be equal to some v sin theta times t so it's v sin theta times t right and also dx right dx will be let uh, the distance in the x axis be some s s be the distance between the person standing with the gun and the uh, the down, the point downside the hanging ball so if dx will be s which is equal to what v cos theta times t right so now i need to eliminate the sin theta and cos theta because i don't like it right i don't want sin theta and cos theta in my equation so i am just going to eliminate that 
so for that i can what i can do is that i can use the advantage of uh, the trigonometric principle so that i am squaring the both sides right i am squaring dy square and dx square i am squaring on both sides and you get h1 minus h2 the whole square must be equal to v square t square sin square theta and uh, the uh, s square will be equal to v square t square cos square theta right now uh, what i can do is that i can add these both and we get uh, s square plus h1 minus h2 the whole square will be equal to v square t square times sin square theta plus cos square theta will be equal to 1 so i get that equation so what i done is that i eliminated the uh, what the uh, what component the cos theta component so that it, it is easy to solve now now what i can write down is the time right time or t square let it be t square that's easier t square will be s square plus h1 minus h2 the whole square by v square right so that's time equation so that means what does this equation gives you this is equation one so this equation tells you what amount of time is required for the bullet to hit the ball right so the bullet to hit the ball when it is falling from that point in the same time as the gun is being fired what time is required to hit the ball that is the information that this equation one gives you okay so h1 here is the maximum height h2 here is the height or height from which you are firing it could be anything you can you if you have two meter height then you will be firing with a height of two meters that is h2 and we have s which is the distance between the standing point and the falling point of the in the ground and v is the initial velocity of the bullet okay i hope that is clear now what i'm going to do is that let let's put down some numbers let's uh, put down some numbers so that you really have an understanding on what it is right so let's put down h1 equal to some 10 meters and uh, let h2 be some 5 meters and s be some 10 meters and v be some 4 meter per second like right? so if you substitute that into this equation you get time must be equal to some square root of right s square which is a uh, what s square is 10 meters square plus uh, h1 minus h2 is just uh, 10 minus 5 that is uh, 5 so that's 5 square plus 10 square by v v square that is uh, let the velocity be 4 meter per second right so that's 4 square that is 16 right so you get square root of 125 by 16 so that will be around what square root of 7.8 uh, or something like that 7.8 seconds so t square is equal to 7.8 t will be around uh, approximately i don't know 2.7 seconds or something like that it will be around 2.7 seconds so that's the time taken for that bullet to hit the ball okay to hit the ball that's the time now in this case in this case our problem with these factors in place will the ball hit the bullet or the bullet hit the ball so the total time taken is 2.7 seconds right 2.7 seconds now let's find out how much uh, will, will it hit okay so in order to hit that means when the ball is falling from h1 right let's use a different color when you the ball is falling from h1 height it is going to travel down to some point so the distance will be a negative distance because our axis here up axis is taken as positive and to the right we are also taken as positive down and to the left they are both negative right so when the distance is measured from the top point to the downwards it will be a negative distance we need to follow the coordinate system 
or else we will get a flipped sign we will get a negative sign in the answer so it might make you get confused so in order to avoid that we must always follow the coordinate system and the coordinate axis so we can say that uh, y will be equal to some y0 the distance traveled by the ball right y0 plus v0 t minus half g t square right so if that's the case then we can say that in the initial starting point let it be it is h1 right from the ball for the ball it is starting from h1 and the initial velocity is zero that term vanishes and there is a minus sign and this y is always minus here here right so for the ball the y for the ball the y is always a minus starts with a minus sign so minus y is equal to because of the explanation i gave given earlier the decreasing value of coordinate axis so minus y will be equal to h1 which is a starting point minus half times g times t square t square we have measured t square right so t square was 7.8 i think 7.8 meter per second yeah, 7.8 meter per sec meter square second square so it's 7.8 so we can substitute that back in it's 7.8 no 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 let's let's i we need, i need a standard equation before that okay for so that you can write down a standard equation so uh, the time will be uh, h1 minus h2 the whole square plus s square by v square right remember that the time equation i'm substituting the equation 1 in here right so you get that equation so y here is h1 so y here is just h1 minus half g times t which is h1 minus h2 i'm writing it again to uh, put it in a box right x, x square by v square so that's the equation we are interested in this is the equation of the ball falling down right so this let's call this equation 2 so this equation the time the t square we already know it it is to be 7.8 right so it's 7.8 so let's substitute that back it y is equal to h was 10 meters h1 was 10 meters minus half g is 9.8 meters per second square and what is inside is 7.8 right 7.8 we have already calculated that so now that must be equal to some 10 minus uh, 38 point I, I did this earlier so that's why I'm writing I'm not multiplying it at the moment so it's 38.22 uh, to some uh, approximation so minus y which is the point of interest here so minus y uh, is actually equal to minus 28.22 right 22 meters so that means y is equal to 28.22 meters so what does this mean why is what does this mean so we have a ball hanging from um, what 10 meters above the ground right so the distance at which the ball is going to hit is 28 meters from h1 right from h1 it is 28.22 meters downwards so that means it's going to be down the ground so 18 meters down the ground the ball is going to hit the bullet is going to hit the ball right sorry about that okay some kind of okay so what happens is that when you shoot from this position right from this position if it is from the ground then it is going to go like this right it's not going to it's not going to hit uh, the uh, ball uh, the ball if the velocity is 4 meter per second so if the velocity is 4 meter per second then the ball is not going to be hit by that bullet so that's the restriction so it's not going to happen right this thing is not going to happen so our uh, uh, the mathematics shows that clearly that the ball is not going to be hit by the bullet so what do you need to hit to hit the bullet so what do you need exactly what uh, is the factor that controls the bullet right so if you have a, some velocity right some velocity of the initial bullet velocity so it's going to take a path like this so if you don't have the enough velocity the ball uh, the bullet will go short right it will go short 
and it will hit the ground before actually hitting the particle in motion right so what you can do is that we can find out the velocity for this particular case right so you can use equation 2 for that ball being drawn downwards so you can use that equation and you can say that y must be equal to some h1 minus half g times t square right so t is just h1 minus h2 the whole square plus s square by minus v square v of the uh, bullet so it's a bullet right so that's t square for you guys so why is it a negative sign because we are measuring from the top the displacement is measuring from the top that means the velocity will also have a minus sign so the minus sign is there needed because we are following the coordinate system and our answer will be of a minus sign that's why we need to always stick with the coordinate system so here we need to find out what do we need to find out so we need to find out where where okay this is what i'm going to find out so if you fire the bullet from here right and we need to find hit the bullet at the same height as i'm standing so i need to fire the bullet like this and it must hit where there where there are standing so that the ball coming down from here to here it must hit the bullet just at this place so this height was h2 the maximum height was h1 and the velocity of the bullet is v and the time taken the, this distance was s right so all that in place now if i want to do that that means the bullet has to travel this is the equation for the bullet right this equation is for the bullet so uh, for the ball so that means it has to the ball has to travel some distance uh, uh, some distance that is equal to uh, the, the velocity you can either put uh, the minus sign in here or the minus sign in here the minus sign in here is enough okay so anyways the distance that has to be traveled must be the this distance h1 minus h2 so h1 minus h2 uh, will be must be the distance that has to be traveled if it is supposed to be in the ground right if it is supposed to be on the ground then this distance will be 10 meters for us right so the 10 meter it is 10 meter above the ground the the ball is so it must be 10 for us guys which is must be equal to y must be equal to 10 and it must be equal to h1 which is equal to 10 minus half g is equal to 9.8 meter per second square h1 minus h2 is just uh, 10 minus h2 that is 5 right so that 5 meters the whole square plus 10 square divided by minus v which is we don't know minus vb right so we don't know that so you can now say that so 10 and 10 will be cancelled so we can say that vb or v of the bullet must be equal to or the minus sign must be equal to minus uh, 9.8 by 2 times uh, 5 uh, square is uh, 25 plus 100 that is 125 so that's 125 that must be equal to approximately equal to 25 meter per second right 5 meter per second so it's a half times 10 so that's 25 meter per second so it the ball must have a minimum velocity the bullet must have a minimum velocity of 25 meter per second in order to um, make sure that the ball is hit on right on the ground that means if you fire the bullet from here and it must go like this and hit on the ground when the ball reaches the ground so that's the minimum velocity that you must exact velocity you must have right if you go about that it will the ball uh, the bullet will go like this right if you go below that the bullet will go like this so if you want to hit on this place at this exact place you must have a velocity of 25 meters per second now what you can do is that what you guys can do is that you can use the equation 2 right use the equation 2 and then uh do some of your own versions right for different heights h you can adjust h2 you can put it equal to zero which i i've done 
or you can put uh, 5 meters which is what I have done you can put it to 0 you can put it to 10 meters it, how much velocity you need that will be a big amount of velocity you can put anything like that and you can exactly know how much velocity that you need that's not it right you can do one more thing what you can do now is that you you know that vy is equal to v sine theta right so if you want to have some certain time right certain time we have a v ta velocity and time equation here right so we have a velocity time equation in here uh, where this is the this is the part of the equation equation one okay you can go back to that so in equation one you have a velocity and time equation so in that equation you can uh, actually put down that you can find out the different values of theta right different values of theta for that velocity and you can adjust theta and you can find out the time right so for different theta values what is the time so you can adjust theta or h1 or t or anything like that and you can find the different possibilities of shooting that so this is a very good problem this is a problem that depicts the all aspects of uh, the two-dimensional motions and two-dimensional materialism uh, examples so i hope you guys benefited from this lecture and uh, for more videos you keep watching and uh, I, knew, I want your feedbacks on this please comment the feedbacks and subscribe to my channel okay thank you so much for watching this video